So by the time they got the game going inside, they were 21 points behind on the scoreboard. And it's not a catch-up offense. You've got to stay in the ball game to start with. Now, the man, of course, who has to make the most decisions in the wishbone is, of course, the quarterback. And for Dayton, he's a good one, a multiple sport athlete, Clayton Trivet. Uh, Clayton has a, a tough job to do here. He, everything hinges on what he sees and what he feels with, when he gets that ball in his hands. He's the guy that makes the whole offense go. He's got running backs that can do the job for him, but really it's all going to start with him. He's the guy that the pressure will be on today. Tony Maglione feels that the wishbone, a little bit less blocking assignments that are needed in that. And I guess the other benefit, similar to the U.S. Army team, which is playing up at Giant Stadium, you don't see the wishbone all that often these days, which means the defense has to get ready for a, a somewhat entirely new scheme on a one-week basis. Yeah, those seven days go by very quickly if you haven't been exposed to the wishbone before. But you said it, it, those blocking schemes are simple. And what it does is it makes good blockers out of average ability for the young men who are doing it. They, all they got to do is get their body on the other fellow and let the back run by. That sets the stage for today's Mountain Valley Conference matchup between the Bulldogs and the Comets, both looking for the first victory of the 91 season. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. Why can't I play on the team? I can't let you play until you have the heart murmur checked out by the cardiologist. When parents hear a physician say, your child has a heart murmur, they often jump to the conclusion that this means heart disease. But most heart murmurs are innocent. They don't necessarily imply disease. Murmurs are merely the sounds of the heart pumping blood through the circulatory system. The few murmurs that aren't so innocent can signal a problem, which should be treated as soon as possible. A thorough diagnostic evaluation should be performed, and this might include echocardiography, electrocardiography, halter monitoring, or stress testing. Results will probably show a perfectly normal heart. Then the youngster and his parents will be reassured, and he can go back to normal activities, like sports, without worry. Welcome back, everyone, to Meisel Field, right off of Meisel Avenue in Springfield, the home of the Dayton Dogs. Dayton is 0-1, as are the Hillside Comets. Our officiating crew for today's game, Tony DiPaola, is the man in the white hat. He, of course, is our referee, Joe Ingato, the umpire, Ray Yadlow, the headlinesman, Jim Romer, the back judge, Larry Yanuzzi, the line judge, and Larry Barrett is the clock operator. John Kay in his second year as head coach of the Hillside Comets. They were 5-4 and four last year, beaten by Roselle last week, which evens up his record at 5-5. Five and five. On the near sidelines, in his first year as head coach of the Bulldogs, but he spent nine years in two stints at Bridgewater West, Tony Maglione compiled a record of 35-41-1 one one at BRW. First year as the head coach of the Bulldogs. The two Bridgewater high schools merged last year into one Bridgewater high. And Tony Maglione came over to coach the Dayton Dogs in place of John Ladon. Uber and Trivet are back to receive the kickoff, and we are underway here at Meisel Field. And the ball is returned out to the 39-yard line. Huber brings it out. So from the 39, that's where the Dayton Dogs will start from offensively for the Bulldogs. Jordan Pintado is up front along with Andrew Sarno as the left side guard. Mark Nadzen is the center. Andrew Nags and DeJohn Cataldo are on the right side. The backs and receivers, three-man backfield of Huber, Kunzel, and Conti. Kucharski is the tight end. Victor Lee is the split end. Calling signals today for the Dayton Bulldogs is Clayton Trivet. Trivet last week was 4 of 16 for 44 yards. Kucharski, the tight end, moves to the right side, and he jumps. So Dayton will be penalized 5 yards before the first snap of the ball. Peter Kucharski, the tight ends getting an early start on the play. So the ball moves back to the 34-yard line. That's where Dayton will start from. And we'll those for a while. Five yard penalty against the dog. 
Remember, the Bulldogs are running out of the wishbone. And again, Kacharski goes to the right side, probably using the same play they would have used. It is Kunzel, the first man. I'm sorry, it's Huber. And Huber makes back the penalty yardage and more. Huber has the ball out to the 45-yard line. So Huber with a gain of 11. Let's check the defense for Hillside. They're going to come out in a five-man front today. Up front, they have Corey Baskerville as the weak side end and Derek Jordan as the strong side end. Davis and Smith are the tackles. Mel T. Scott is the nose guard. The linebacking core is Everett Stokes and Rick Henriquez. And the secondary for the Comets has Parker as the monster. Lewis, Leggett, and King are back deep. Second and four for the Dogs. And again, it's Huber. And Huber will be close to a first down at the 49-yard line. And, Dick, that's what the wishbone will give you. A lot of different looks. And as Dayton did last week, they're going to try and make sure everybody gets their hands on the ball sometime today. The first two offensive plays were designed to try and confuse Hillside by moving the position of the tight end. Hillside declares their defense strong side, weak side. And they line, uh, the, the Bulldogs line up in one formation, shift the tight end to the other side of the formation to put an overload of people on that side. No adjustment on the part of Hillside means that they're outnumbered on that side of the formation. First down. So Huber has all 15 offensive yards for the Dogs. Dayton was 1-8 last season, 0-7 in conference. They were beaten by Immaculata last week, 21-7. And again, it is Conti and Humer lining up behind Kunzel in the wishbone. Kunzel. First man through. He'll get a yard out to the 50-yard line. Stopped by the middle of the Comet defense. See big number 73 out there for the Comets. Shelby Smoke Davis. Shelby is there to plug things up in the middle. John K says, what a great attitude that young man has. Second and nine. Morrison, the tight end, goes to the right side. Second man is Huber. And Huber will get three yards. It'll set up a third and six for the Dayton Dogs. Same move again, trying to move the tight end to the far side of the formation to create an unbalanced line and an overload at that position. Huber's a slasher. Maltese Scott made the tackle on the play. No attempt so far to uh, go outside by the Bulldogs. The ball rests at the 46 yard line of Hillside. Trivet keeps it, and he's going to run with it. He's got a first down and more, and Trivet is into the secondary and finally dragged down by Byron Lewis, but not before he gets to the 25-yard line. Clayton Trivet, 13 carries last week, and this is what the quarterback gives you in the wishbone. Once again, it was unbalanced to the wide side of the field. Quarterback keeps the ball. Pitch man tries to get out ahead of him. A sweetheart of a block here by Victor Lee comes back and screens off the safety man so we can pick up an additional about eight yards on the play. Nice effort. Trivet played uh, baseball in the spring, second baseman and pitcher on the Dayton team that made it into the sectional final. A game that we tried to televise on TV3, but we got rained out. They were going to play up at Whippany Park. To the left side, that is Conti. Conti had four carries last week for 17 yards. And at this early point in the ball game, all three running backs and the quarterbacks have at least one carry. Well, everybody's handled the ball. They got, they've got they been feeling out the defense now. Now they know that they could, that time was an attempt to attack the short side of the field, the weak side of the offense, and they were outnumbered there, and it didn't do very well with it. Officials time out as Davis has to repair something on his helmet. Ball rests at the 
23-yard line. So a gain of three on the play for Conti. Second and seven coming up for the Dayton Dogs. Trivet still has it. Good fake by Trivet, and he brings it to the 10. And it's going to be a first down. Excellent decision on his part. Excellent decision. Peter Kunzel comes off the ball, takes the fake, draws the attention of everybody. Nice lead block by the halfback. And off the races goes the quarterback. Pat Conti did a nice job from his right halfback position with a, with a, a nice block on the, on the penetrating linebacker. Ball rests just outside the 10, so it will be first and 10. About 10 yards and a foot away from the goal line. This is Conti. And Conti is stacked up by Davis. Wade Smith also helping on the tackle. So the two defensive tackles combine. Well, once again, we're, we, other than the backs here, they're, they're running into a position where they are overloaded defensively and outweighed considerably. Molman is in for Conti in the backfield. Gain of two on the play. The ball rests at the nine. And it is Kunzel who will take the ball to the six. Kunzel takes the ball to about the six yard line. We're going to bring up a third. Third and, well, I guess we'll have to call it six from here. And again, they can get a first down just shy of the goal line. I noticed that uh, Kendall Ogle is in now at an inside linebacking position as they've gotten down close to the goal. And John Kay said he'd uh, probably limit Ogle's time defensively, but Ogle is in now. Tenth play of the drive for the Dogs. Trivet has it. He's going to pitch outside. He's got Uber. Uber with the touchdown. Six-yard touchdown run for Andy Uber. His second touchdown of the year. I gotta tell you something, for a, for a young man who's only been running this offense for a month, Clayton Trivet does a nice job with it. He made a little bit of a head fake, ball fake, drew everybody to him and, and got the pitch man clear. Nadsen will attempt the extra point. Dayton shows an unusual formation here. Cataldo is the center. Finally, everyone moves into position. Well, that's an, if you don't cover me, we'll go for two formation. Madsen's right-footed kick on the way, and it is good. So Dayton takes a 7-0 lead over the Comets, and on the replay watches, no one contains the outside pitch man, Huber. Nice fake with the fullback, well picked up, but Huber's out there, and the little bit of fake right there brought the contain man across the face of the pitch, and there's that nice block again in the end zone by Victor Lee. Victor, we were watching them do those shield blocking in, in their pregame warm-ups, and uh, Victor it seems to be a master at it so far. And you are correct, Dick, and I did ask Tony Maglione about Clayton Trivet having to learn as the quarterback a new system, and he said uh, Trivet has responded very well to it. He's a very good athlete who makes very good decisions. You saw a great example of one there. He knew the best time to pitch it, he brought the contain man in, and as soon as Uber had it, there was nobody to stop him for those final six yards. No, he's not a burner on speed, but he runs very well also. He's got an intelligent uh, approach to running. And certainly, as you mentioned, one of the big plays in that drive was Trivet's own 20-plus yard gainer. So Huber with the touchdown, his second of the season. Nadzen adds the point. Kucharski will kick it off for the Dogs. Adams, Leggett, and Parker are back to receive for the Comets. Lamond Adams, number seven, is the middleman.
Once again, talking yesterday, Paul, we were talking about how difficult it is to simulate the other team's offense in a week's time, and especially when you, you have nothing in common with them. Little roller fielded by the Comets. And that was Maltese Scott who falls on the football, and the Comets will take over at their own 25-yard line. Offensively for Hillside, Alex Brescia, Derek Jordan. The only returning player with any experience, Corey Baskerville, the center. Wade Smith and Milt Jones are up front. The backs and receivers are Jamie Parker, Kendall Ogle, and Everett Stokes. Todd Harris and Terry Leggett are the ends. Two-year starter Byron Lewis, 7 for 13 last week, calls the signals from the 25. Very little yardage. And the Comets will be faced with a second and ten. Defensively for Dayton, up front they go with Lynch and Conti as the ends, Nadzin and Pintado as the tackles, John Cataldo is the nose guard. Two linebackers are Mullman and Kunzel. And in the secondary, Gordon Morrison is the monster, the free safety is Andrew Huber, and Trivet and Wright are the cornerbacks. Lewis keeps it. A yard on the play. It will be a third and eight coming up for the Hillside Comets. Good penetration defensively for, for the Bulldogs. They're getting across that line of scrimmage. Penetration into that backfield. Watch you see the orange shirts in the backfield. Force the quarterback back to the inside, and there's the team pursuit. Boy, I'll tell you what, in, in, in uh, two plays so far, their defense has impressed me. They are scooting to the football. Neil Lynch, the man who eventually makes the tackle. Third down possible throwing situation. As we mentioned, Lewis was 7 of 13 last week. He's got Leggett split to the left side. Pitch backs to Stokes. There is a flag on the play. Stokes will lose yardage on the play, and more than likely that's going to be an offensive penalty. Illegal procedure, Hillside, and of course the Bulldogs will decline it and bring up a fourth down for the Hillside Comets. Now this is one area where Hillside certainly has some concerns today. Their usual punter, Devin Long, was injured in last week's game and is unavailable for play today. So as their punter, they're going to go with Rick Henriquez, number 44. So Rick Henriquez will do the punting early in the ball game for the Comets on 4th and 14 from the 21 Henriquez gets off a short punt off the left side of his foot it rolls to the left side and that might have been a free ball and it is recovered by Hillside now there's, there's a hustling mistake but there's a, a big mistake for the Bulldogs yeah Pete Kunzel for some reason went after the football and as soon as he got near it he was hit the ball popped free and Hillside will take over at the 27 yard line the only thing I can think of Paul the kick was so short he might have thought it was blocked by one of his teammates that's and, what I was and it had crossed the line of scrimmage and even then it doesn't make any difference it's still a, a dead ball right there if he lets it go Ogle Three yards out to the 30. And the one thing that Dayton did not want to see, Hillside with the ball a lot, happens because of the turnover on the punt. Well, they built their confidence now on, on stopping the run. Let's see what they can do if Hillside puts the ball in the air. On the counter, this is Jamie Parker. Parker for a two-yard gain to the 32-yard line. In order to make a counter play go like that, the quarterback, Byron Lewis, is going to have to not look back and see what happened to the back he handed the ball to. He's going to have to continue his fake to the sideline, try and draw somebody with him. Lynch made the tackle. Third and five for the Comets. Leggett split wide right. 
Lewis, quick toss to Leggett. Leggett trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Trivet, and Trivet stops him, and I believe that's going to be short of a first down. We'll probably get a measurement from the far side of the field. Good open field tackle by Clayton Trivet. That's short by a stripe. Here's a look at it. Lewis saw that Just, he had man-on-man -man coverage. Right, it's a quick hitch out here, but Trivet comes up and really gets into the, involved in this tackle. Gets his chest right on the on the attack there. Oh boy, nice job. A nice number-to-number -number tackle by Clayton Trivet. And the question is, was he able to drive through? First down by the nose of the football. Well, that was the other option I had. Short by a stripe or first down by a nose. I chose the other. So it's a first down for the Comets. The ball will be marked at the 37-yard line. There is a discussion going on between Tony DiPaola, the referee, and Larry Barrett up here in the booth, the clock operator, about a possible malfunction of the clock. So time, official time, I should say, will be kept now down on the field. Well, for the Comets, it's the kind of break that they needed because what they want to do is keep the ball away from the Springfield offense. The Bulldogs cannot uh, control the ball on them as long as they maintain possession of it. The Springfield and Mountainside contingent. People will hate me. <laughs> Old dog, new tricks philosophy, you know? Dayton Regional High, uh, of course, is part of the Union County Regional School System, but the majority of their students come from, of course, Springfield and Mountainside. I don't have that problem with any of the other regional schools. That's true. It's the only one I have that problem with. <laughs> First and ten for the Comets. Unusual formation in the backfield. Almost like a power eye, but with only two players. Ogle dives forward. We saw Kendall Ogle last year as a freshman in he just had a great day against Johnson Regional. Ogle is six feet tall, 190 pounds, and there is certainly stardom predicted for Kendall Ogle in the future. John Kay says he's He's got to try and be a little bit careful with him, not to push him in two ways right away. Stokes with the carry. He would love to probably use him all 48 minutes, but he said, you know, i got to remember at times, he's, he's a sophomore, and for the most part, he's really still learning the game. Here's a look at the carry by Stokes. Defensively, you can see all the orange shirts closing in on the football, keeping good position, keeping in their lanes. Nice job. That's what you call team pursuit, and they're doing it well. Yeah, even though Mark Nadson didn't get the tackle there, he stuffed the blocker and gave Stokes nowhere to run. Kept the lane closed. They faked the counter. Lewis with a quick toss to Ogle. He can't hold on to the ball. Is popped free. But Lewis, um, Lewis saw that Ogle was open on the play, and Ogle just could not barely hold on. This is the belly counter play out of the wing tee. Good pressure here from the backside, but the ball is thrown right off the hand. Should have been had. And Trivet gets a head on it. And breaks up that scoring opportunity. So for the second time today, Henriquez will drop back to punt. Ball will be snapped from the 44. And Henriquez gets off a much better punt this time. Fair catch called for by Huber, and he will field it at the 35. Dayton takes over from the 35 with a 7-0 lead. They went on a 10-play drive to start things off. 
took the opening kickoff and no surprise out of the wishbone every play on the ground Huber Huber a very busy young man football in the spring basketball in the winter and he's the shortstop on the baseball team in the spring One thing we didn't mention, Paul, is that the wind has really picked up considerably here, and it's blowing from our right to left, and that has another effect on, on the punting game of, of uh, Mr. Rick Henriquez because he, he gets the ball high in the air, and since it's not spiraling, the wind has a chance to go against it and kill it. That's the end of the first quarter with the score, Dayton 7, Hillside nothing. We'll be back with second quarter football action from Meisel Field right after this. If you haven't tuned into Info lately, you don't know what you've been missing. That's Info, New Jersey's magazine, Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. and only on Suburban Cablevision TV3 for the Dayton Bulldogs. A 10-play drive capped off by a six-yard touchdown run by Andy Huber. Mark Nadsen added the extra point, and Dayton with the 7-0 lead. And Tony Maglione has got to be happier with the first quarter today as opposed to the first quarter last week when they gave up 21 first quarter points to Immaculata. Then they shut out the Spartans the rest of the way, but lost 21-7. First quarter stats. 70 rushing yards for the Bulldogs. Hillside with five passing yards. One penalty in the game, and that was on the very first play of the game. And Trivet does not like the formation. He calls timeout. He had Huber in motion on that play, ran Huber into the sideline. There was no place else to go for Huber. If he hadn't called timeout, I think Huber ended up in the fence. He would have had a, a 10 on 11 play. We are at Meisel Field on the campus of Dayton Regional. We'd like to extend our thanks to Pete Falzerano and his crew for their assistance today. Pete, the longtime athletic director at Dayton. Ah, there we go. Finally popped free. Since about midway through the first quarter, I had something in my eye under my contact lens. And, uh, Dick, I know you don't know the feeling, but for contact lens wearers, it felt like a piece of lumber, a two-by-four. And here I am crying in the booth. And you think I'm crying about last night's Bloomfield loss, but uh, <laughs> that, that finally takes care of it. I'm actually able to see a little bit here. <laughs> They're wearing orange and white. Huber with the carry. By the way, you'll be able to see the Bloomfield Belleville game on TV3 this weekend if you have not already seen it. Third and three coming up for Dayton. The ball rests at the 42 yard line of Dayton. I'm Paul Spahala with me, Dick Zimmer. You're watching Dayton and Hillside from the Mountain Valley Conference. Trivet still has it, and he's got a first down. He's across the 50-yard line, and he is upended there by Stokes. But it is a first down for the Bulldogs. And once again, the quarterback with the quick decision. Nice fake, and now he decides it's my carry. What they're, what they're running here is lead option from the wishbone, which is not the true wishbone play. Uh, with a near halfback is blocking, kicking out and letting the quarterback run inside an off-tackle hole rather than run outside hole on the play. On that play, Terry Leggett on the cornerback, he came up as contained, but he went so far outside that Trivet decided to duck inside. First down the ball at the 47. This is Huber. 
And Huber falls forward to the 44. We'll give him a gain of three, second and seven. A good penetration by Milt Jones on that play. Got his arm underneath and tripped him up. Offensive line's getting off the ball. Remember, we mentioned before the game, all they got to do is get out there and tie up some people. Just get chest to chest if they can. They don't have to move them any place, just create a lane. And you don't have to contain your block very long with the wishbone. Trivet is going to keep this one. And Dick, if I, if I read the play correctly, the reason he couldn't pitch it, the play really got strung out by the hillside defensive line. Yeah. And had he pitched it to Uber, he, there would have been a loss of yardage. Right, he'd, he'd been forced to, into the sideline. There was no place for him to turn upfield. Uh, Derek jo Jordan did a nice job at his defensive end position on that play, stringing the play and covering the quarterback both. He took away both options for the quarterback. Didn't let him run and took away the pitch as well last by week, stringing it. Last week, Immaculata took away the pitch from Dayton, and Tony Maglione said we changed our philosophy a little bit. We went more to the middle, and we were very successful running in the middle, but we were down 21 by that time. Third and five. Delay of game. Marks the ball back to the original line of scrimmage. We'll call it a third and ten. The Dayton coaching staff feels that uh, it was a quick clock. Second penalty of the day against the Bulldogs. Third and almost 10 yards. On the counter play, they go to Conti. He's going to try and run it outside. He turns the corner. And Conti gets inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Gain of eight on the play for Conti. Now, decision time. They got a, sh a, a long one on fourth down. Kendall Ogle, the man who will make the tackle here. There's the, the counter coming back. Run motion toward the sideline and run the counter back to the wide field. Ogle got a hand on, made him twist, slowed him up a bit, and a good pursuit coming over. But a nice job by Conti trying to keep himself alive and extend himself for the extra yardage. Just inside the 40, Tony Maglione is going to go on fourth, and now it is really more like one yard. It is Trivet. Trivet follows Kunzel for a first down to the 33. And I might have noticed Kendall Ogle beating on the ground here. His job is to stop the quarterback. First person's on the fullback. His job is to stop the quarterback, and he only reached with an arm, missed him. Got outside position instead of staying inside out on the on the ball carrier. This is the second time that Dayton has touched the ball today and the second long drive they have put together. Fifth first down for the Dayton Dogs. Huber. Stopped in the middle by Milt Jones. Now, people are probably wondering why they bother running inside like that when they haven't been able to pick up any yardage with the fullback inside. And, well, the reason is to keep the defense honest. Try and draw them in to open up the outside game when they need it. Gain of one on the play, second and nine for Dayton. Notice even with a third down and nine before, they never threw the ball. They're going to keep the ball on the ground. That's their philosophy. 19th play of the game coming up for Dayton. Trivet has it. He pitches back and he fumbles. And it's recovered by the Comets. Jamie Parker comes up with the ball at the 36. And that is the main drawback to the wishbone. It is a high turnover type offense, especially when the quarterback is hit while pitching. Uh, watch Kendall Ogle come in here, pen make the penetration and strip him of the football. He pinned his, his arm and, and stopped the pitch. But they did have coverage on the pitch man anyhow, so they might have lost yardage on the play, but not possession. So Hillside will take over from their own 36. Ogle 
bounces off one tackler, gains a yard, and Dick, that's probably the reason why the wishbone lost favor on the college level, because it became such a high turnover type offense. And again, you have to have, of course, great personnel. And you also, you also have to have a good defense to keep you from getting behind, too, so that you don't have to play catch-up ball. Not many college teams still run the bone. The, of course, the best-known exception to that rule, the Black Knights of the Hudson. They're up at Giant Stadium today. Kendall Ogle only nine yards on four carries, taking on the Scarlet Knights. Lewis, quick toss over the middle. He's got a completion. That was Danon King on the receiving end. The ball is now at the Dayton 48. Lewis throws the good short pass. He does. He gets back quickly, gets his feet set. That's important. And throws over the rush to the split end cutting across. Now, good hustle and pursuit by the by the Bulldogs, but they did have another open receiver on the play who might have been open deeper. It was Terry Leggett. From the 48-yard line. Pitch back to Ogle. Big hole for Kendall Ogle. He's got 10 and more. Ogle is finally dragged down by an ankle tackle by Jason Molman, but not until he gets to the 28. A 20-yard pickup for Kendall Ogle. Watch Good the huge here. hole. Good action here. They had two guards pulling in a tackle, kicked it out wide open. Tackle was missed right there, but that's a little guy trying to tackle a big guy. Tripped him up from behind. Stopped him from going all the way. Tony Maglione and the Dayton Bulldogs call for time. They want to try and readjust the defense or probably point out a certain key that someone might not have picked up on that play. Well the, well, the Comets now, Paul, have that wind at their back. They, they were a little bit reserved with their offense in the first quarter because of, of the, the threat of the wind. But now they've opened up wide open. they got the wide receivers split out 15, 20 yards on either side of the formation. And uh, they've opened up the defense that way. Well, the score here is Dayton 7, Hillside nothing. If you want to know the score of every game in the TV3 area, we invite you to join us live Saturday nights at 7.30 for Scoreboard. Every week you'll get results, highlights from probably four or five different games throughout the area, and, of course, the TV3 Top Ten Poll. That's Saturday evenings at 7.30 and Sunday mornings at 9.30 here on TV3. Sleep late on Sunday. Get all the scores Saturday night. First and ten from the 28. Ogle, and again a big hole on the right side. Now as the fullback, John Case says Ogle has the ability from that position to go left or right. He's had two big runs on the most recent two plays to the right side. He might call him, oh, no huddle. No huddle, but no idea of what the snap count was. No. He might, I say, coach might call him a fullback. They might call him a fullback in Hillside. But as far as Springfield's concerned, at eight yards deep, he's the tailback when he's deeper than the halfback who is doing the lead blocking for him. Loss of five, of course, on the penalty. Brings the ball out to the 26. Second and seven from there. Lewis looking to throw, has time, fakes once, goes long, looking for Leggett and just overthrows him in the end zone. But Leggett had a step on Trivet. You remember the pattern they ran before? It's the same one. <laughs> Coverage was a little bit closer, but he did have his, he did have his, his, uh, his head faint, sort of a pump fake, look left, throw right. And if he had a tight spiral, might have been easier to catch. Just off the fingertips. I think he got a nail on it. Third and seven. We've seen the Comets like to throw. Let's see if they will on this play. Maybe they're setting up the screen. Pass out to the left side, and Jason Molman slapped it away from Cedric Stokes. Six foot four, senior Jason Molman. 
Plays basketball in the winter, and he little basketball there. Got off the ground and slapped this pass away. We got an outside blitz coming by Conti. And a nice defense here by the linebacker who was penetrating on the play and, and playing man coverage on that back out of the backfield. Fourth and seven, wind kicks up. Comets are going for it. Pressure on from the left side, and Molman combines with Conti to drop Lewis. There is a flag on the play. Looks like a holding position there. Yeah, on a long developing play such as that, and they are talking to the Dayton captain, Jason Molman, holding Hillside, and that will be declined as the ball is brought back to the 39-yard line. A loss of 14 on the sack. Up till the last two plays, it looked like the Comets offensive line had gained control of this football game, but the Bulldog defense is really a scrappy bunch. And part of the thing that turned the tide there was that penalty. Ogle had just gotten off the nice eight yard run. They went with the hurry up. They were hit with the illegal procedure penalty and then things started to break down the long pass which just was incomplete then the pass that was knocked down and the sack and for some reason it didn't look like Hillside was ready there their defense was still huddling on the play perhaps Dayton, Dayton caught him with a quicker huddle than usual about Several hillside players were still running up to the line. Yeah, Rick, Rick Henriquez, the, the inside linebacker, came up there and was going to blitz on the play and stepped into the neutral zone before the ball was snapped, which is an encroachment, automatic five yards with the dead ball. Ball now at the 44-yard line of Dayton. We're told just over five minutes to go in the half, just over five. Kunzel. Gets to the 46. Second and three. Once again, if you can blast the fullback in there and keep people honest, they've got to honor that man. Trivet still has it. Dives forward. He will be close to a first down at the 50. And from that placement, he is going to have it. Tony DiPaola will call time to bring the chains in. Right now, Hillside is operating without Shelby Davis. He is on the far bench. Just got finished taping his ankle. And we may see Davis later in this ball game, and it is a first down. Well, Ogle's on the bench over there, also on the sideline, anyhow, not being taped, but he's he's taking a breather on defense. First down, the ball right at the 50-yard line. Four minutes given to each side. Four-minute warning. There is Ogle. Waiting his turn, whether it comes on offense or defense. Huber. Huber for 10 and a first down. Huber dives forward to the 37 yard line, a 13 yard pickup for Andy Huber. This is, this is a nice job. Nice job here. Nice turnout block by the tight end right there. Huber takes it in. Boy, look at the position of the head and shoulders when he's reading that daylight as he breaks through the line of scrimmage. Could have gone in either direction looking for the cutback. That's a good runner. And the way Dayton has held the ball in this first quarter of play, including Huber with nine carries for 48 yards, uh, Hillside may not see the ball the rest of the half. Trivet has it. And Trivet ducks inside to the 33. Smoke's back. Smoke Davis. Shelby Davis, a three-year starter on defense for the Comets. He 
is twisting that right ankle. Trying to test it out. Well, this is Dayton's third possession of the game. And they just keep grounding out the clock. Trivet looks to throw, but the pressure is on Ogle. Well, Ogle didn't have to wait long on the sidelines. He and Corey Baskerville combined for the sack at the 40-yard line. Well, this is tough for a quarterback to throw when there's a linebacker assigned to him man-to-man. -man. we got Baskerville coming from the back side, and there it goes Ogle from the front side, combined to sack. And the coverage downfield was excellent. I mean, there, there was white jersey all over orange. You couldn't see any orange down there. John Kay picked a good time to get Kendall Ogle back in. Dayton, 10-play drive, 9-play drive, and right now a 6-play drive but they face a tough third and 12 situation here from the 40. Trivet rolling left, he'll pitch it out to Conti, and Conti is hit, the ball is free. Comets try and reach down for it, and yes, the Comets have it. On this play, we're gonna see a little bit of a, of a breakdown in the pitch relationship. Good block there by, by the halfback, but the, the Pitch man was not at the proper depth here. Nice job of stripping him of the ball. The relationship was not good. There it comes out the backside and is caught by the, the Comets. Corey Baskerville with the recovery. And once he grabbed it on his stomach, of course, the play was over. You saw Ogle wanted to reach in, and he stayed on his feet. He wanted to reach in, pick it up, and start to run with it. First and ten. Well, so the Comets do get the ball back in this quarter. And Ogle, trying to make the most of it, he gets a five-yard carry on first down, just across the 45. Tell you what, that's a lot of beef coming through there at 190 pounds, and, and he hits real hard. Dayton showing a four-man front. Lewis quick toss to the right side to Leggett. Leggett's got the first down. He got away from one tackler. Trivet finally stops him at the Dayton 46. Hillside has all three. Well, no, they don't. They have two timeouts left as they use one. Dayton down to one timeout remaining. They burn two here in the second quarter. Hillside with two remaining as John Kay calls timeout. And John joins his huddle to speak with the Hillside Comets. John's got to be very happy. Uh, numbers are quite high now on, on Hillside's side. Uh, Quite a few more players are coming out for the team and really looking to turn things around in Hillside. They finished 5-4 and four last year, which was the first time they were over 500 since 1986. And you got to give credit to John Kay and his staff and, of course, the young men at Hillside really looking to get things going over there. Always been a town with a lot of good athletes. Usually, of course, well-known for their basketball program. Early 80s, they had some outstanding football teams and even made it into a sectional final one year. A game that we televised that was played in Caldwell. I believe that was the neutral site for the game. But the Hillside Comets trying to get on a roll this year. They've got a first and 10 from the 45. Hillside has gone to the air, of course, much more often than Dayton. And it looks like they're going to the air again. Lewis pumps once, looking long, airs it out for Parker, and it's incomplete. Huber with coverage on the play. And Lewis took a big hit from Jordan Pintado just as he released it. Fake fullback, fake halfback, rolls behind. Pump fake. Stop and go pattern by the receiver. And just as he was going to throw the ball, he was hit from the backside. His arm was hit. The ball was up in the air for a long time. Second and ten. Again, official time being kept down on the field. We are certainly under two minutes to play. Fake to Parker. Lewis forced out of the pocket by Lynch. 
A loss of two on the play. Cataldo gets credit for the tackle, but it was Neil Lynch, the senior defensive end, who forced Lewis from the rollout to the near sideline, forced him back the other way for Cataldo. Timeout, Hillside. Still good defense by the Bulldogs because they kept their re relative positions. They stopped them on the front side where he attacked, and they kept containment on the back side and kept pressure in the middle. So they, they had a pocket that collapsed on him when he tried to run. Third and 11, as Lewis was able to scamper close to the line of scrimmage. Last year, Hillside a one-point winner in a game that was played in Hillside. 7-6 the final score last season. Coming up next week for Hillside should be a pretty good test. Governor Livingston in a home game and then they've got Brearley the following week at home. So two tough ones coming up for the Comets. Well, first they've got to figure out a way to get back into this one. They are trailing 7 to nothing. And they are now in the midst of their sixth straight quarter without scoring. So I'm sure that the Hillside offense wondering about that. They lost last week to Roselle 13 to nothing. They trail here 7 nothing. We get the word from the field 36 seconds left in the half. Third and 11. Draw to Ogle. Ball was popped free. And it is recovered by the Comets as Derek Jordan, the left side guard, falls on the football. A gain of two on the play. Fourth and eight. Sorry, a gain of three. Fourth down, however. Fourth and eight. Mark Nadzum put a hit on Ogle that play, but I think he got the worst of it. And that will do it for the first half of play. Very first drive, Dayton took it in for a touchdown, and that's all the scoring we've seen today. We'll go to the break with the score, Dayton 7, Hillside nothing. At Suburban Cable Visions TV3, we're channeling our energy to bring you the best in local programming. You can view educational shows, community events, local entertainment, and sports. All courtesy of TV3. We're the channel you've been flipping for. The Dayton rushing game has been in full gear in the first half. 121 rushing yards. They haven't even, have even attempted a pass, which is why they have zero passing yards. Hillside with a, a couple of Good rushes late in the second quarter, 43 rushing yards, 16 in the air. Each team penalized twice. Big number on the board there, three Dayton turnovers has stalled their offense somewhat. But uh, here is the lone point of the ball game on a very nice drive. Yeah, this was the tail end of, the, of a very nice drive in their first offensive series. See the little fake to the inside, brought everybody in, thought they were going to continue to, uh, to run upfield. Just pitched it back to Huber and Huber was able to get around the corner unscathed into the end zone. Coming up next week, well, we've talked about him a lot, Terrell Willis from Orange. We'll get a chance to see him on TV3 as the Tornadoes will take on the Caldwell Chiefs. You'll be able to see this game Saturday evening at 8 and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on TV3. Second half of our TV3 doubleheader will bring you a matchup from Woodman Field in Montclair. 
where Bergen Catholic will be visiting, taking on the Mounties. You'll be able to see this game Saturday evening at 10.30 or Sunday night at 9.30. Orange Caldwell, Bergen Catholic, Montclair. That's your doubleheader next week on TV3. So, Dick, a very good first half of play. The uh, Dayton Bulldogs showing good control of that wishbone. Yep. You mentioned before they hadn't thrown a pass. They tried to throw one, and there was a big sack involved there, and that would have been the only time they tried to put the ball in the air. But they've been able to, on a long yardage play, pick it up with the outside game or with the option, let the quarterback either run it or pitch it. We'll be back with the third quarter kickoff in just a moment from Mizell Field. And again, the score, Dayton 7, Hillside nothing. Dad, I'm worried about you home alone all day. If you think your elderly parent is unsafe at home, confused, or lonely, adult daycare may be the answer. Many types of adult daycare programs are available. They offer recreation, socialization, and mental stimulation in a supervised setting. Some offer medical care for the physically disabled, such as occupational and physical therapy. Some programs will provide transportation to and from your home. Financial assistance may be available if your family member is eligible. For information on adult daycare programs in your community, call the Essex County Division on Aging at 201-678-9700 or the Union County Office on Aging at 201-527-4866. You know, Alice, I really got quite a workout. And the dogs are leading, 7 to nothing. Premiere of a new show on Suburban Cable, Sports Talk. You ever heard of that guy? Yeah. Yeah, Gary Keller. He, uh, That's not his phone he number, used to coach. Though. He used to coach golf, right? Yeah, he was a golf coach. He rolled around on the mat in the wintertime. He'll be joining Matt Lachlan for the premiere of Sports Talk. You can call Gary and Matt at 908-636-5333. The show debuts Thursday evening, the 10th of October at 630 and, of course, they will be speaking with Gary Keller, currently the athletic director at Westfield, longtime football, wrestling, and golf coach, and uh, the subject of a recent book. I was going to suggest that everybody run out and buy that book so they can call in intelligently on that program. Of which, from what I understand, Dick Zimmer is mentioned prominently in the book also. It details the history of Westfield football and... Uh, I just don't have a percentage of it. That's, that's all. true. That's true. Maybe you should uh, try and work out a deal. For those who uh, who aren't familiar, and we often lament that uh, a lot of people aren't that familiar with even recent history, not just in high school sports, but even in the world. Uh, boy, Westfield football was an incredible machine for many, many years. You did not look forward to having them on your schedule. And, uh, of course, Gary Keller, the longtime head coach, and the gentleman standing to my right, Dick Zimmer, the longtime defensive coordinator. I'm sure you could uh, add many, many stories to the show. Some you could even tell. I was, I was interviewed some for the book. However, they couldn't print any of the things I said. <laughs> now, come on. Anyway, that's the debut of Sports Talk. That'll be a live sports show every Thursday evening on TV3. And we will have guests from the local sports world. As we said, we debut with Gary Keller, and we hope that you join us for Sports Talk every Thursday evening on TV3. The Bulldogs will kick it away to start the third quarter of play. Kacharski will get us started. It's a low bouncer fielded by Meltisa Scott, and Scott will take it across the 40 to the 44-yard line. So excellent starting position for the Hillside Comets. Well, Hillside in the first half didn't touch the ball all that much, and that was due to Dayton. Punted the first and second times they had it, gave it up on downs, their third possession after a seven-play drive, and then halftime ran out their fourth possession. Their average start, as you can see, at their own 32, so now they are starting at the 43.
No surprise, it is Ogle first man, and Ogle takes it into Dayton territory, and Ogle stepped out of bounds. Ogle stepped out at the 34. He just was pushed to the outside and could not keep his footing, and he clearly stepped on the sideline at the 34-yard line. Here's another look at it. This is a base play of the wing tee. This is the, the, the fullback off tackle on the split end side of the formation. Gets the defense in. Let's see if we can pick up the foot on the chalk. There it is, right there. Not the right foot, but the previous foot just barely hit the stripe at the 34. But anyway, a big gainer for the Comets. Takes the ball through the 34-yard line. Ogle, and he is stuffed right at the 35, probably lost half a yard, and Dick, I would not be surprised if when Hillside has the ball, the only name I have to keep mentioning for most of the second half will be Ogle. I think John Kay is going to work that young man for most of the remaining 24 minutes. Tell you what, he could make you a brilliant coach if you did. There's John Kay. And again, I'm sure they're going to call Ogle's number quite a bit. 25 carries last week, over 100 yards. He is the deep man, and he is deep. He is a good eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. He could punt from there. Pitch back to Ogle, trying to get ahead of steam, and Jason Molman drops him at the 35. Molman had a big pass block in the first half, and now a big tackle here in the early third quarter. Jason's got a kind of got that side of the formation under control over there. He's doing a real fine job. He comes and, and scrapes this time right up through the hole and meets the, the ball carrier Ogle right in the backfield for a loss. I asked Tony Maglione that are you going to try and have someone try to shadow Ogle around? And he said, if we do, if it comes to that, it would probably be Molman. Because Molman is a very good defensive player. We'll be able to follow Ogle around. Official timeout. Hillside 16 rushes today. Ogle has 11 of them. Not much of a surprise. Third and 11. Hillside has thrown well on short yardage plays. They give it to Leggett. No, I'm sorry, that was Parker. And Parker is pushed back. Neil Lynch, among others, helping out on the tackle. He might have cracked the 35, which would put it back to the original line of scrimmage. And he'll even make it to the 34. So a gain of two on the play, but it will be fourth and nine for the Comets. Six-man front for the Bulldogs. Fake to Parker. Pressure is on, and Lynch brings him down. Neil Lynch, six-foot-one senior defensive end, shoots through for the sack. Neil kept good leverage on the play. There's penetration as one of the defenders gets through and puts pressure from inside there. Chases them to the outside, and Lynch keeps leverage on the ball and is able to get a sh shirt tail tackle on the play. Kucharski is the man who forced Lewis from the pocket, and then Lynch records the second Dayton sack of the day. On downs, the Dogs will take it over at the 41. Dayton today, look at those drives. Ten plays, nine plays, and six plays. They have shown ball control today, and of course the first drive resulted in the only points of the ball game, the Huber touchdown. From the 41, Trivet to Huber. Huber, a four-yard gain to the 45 as the sun peeks out again at Mizell Field. That off-tackle blast when they go unbalanced to their right has been continues to be a good gainer for uh, the Bulldogs. Kunzel the fullback in front of Huber and Conti. Trivet is going to keep it. 
He follows Morrison. There's a flag on the play, and it probably will be a face mask from the yeah. way uh, Trivet is reacting. Yeah, well, the way his head's turn turned also as the nails get caught in there. We'll get a look at it. It happens quite frequently when you reach from behind to try and make a tackle on someone. It, it, you just reach and you grab for anything you can grab right there. Ogle grabs from behind and gets his hand on the face mask. Let it up immediately, but, you know, there's no such thing as a touch foul in high school on that face mask. It's a major all the time. That was Enriquez who committed the foul. It is a first down that takes the ball to the 36. Well, this is the way Dayton started the first half of play with a long drive that puts seven up on the board. They would like to do the same thing here in the second half of play. And the give to Kunzel. And he is stopped immediately by Milt Jones. Milt has shown a great deal of discipline over there. His job has been the fullback all day, and he's been all over that fullback from that position. No gain, second and ten. Gordon Morrison brings in the play. Kacharski heads to the sidelines. Midway through the third quarter of play. Trivet pitches it back to Uber. Uber had a reach behind himself. And he is able to make the corner before Leggett pushes him out. There is a flag on the play, and I think we might see a clip. Yeah, Victor got, I believe, a bad angle on that uh, shield block right there. You say the pitch was behind. Andrew uh, Huber made a real nice play on it, showing his baseball talents being able to go to his glove hand side. It's the equivalent of a bad hop for the shortstop reached that Rawlings glove out there and made the grab, but the play is going to come back because of the clip, and it will come out into Dayton territory to the 46. It's a precision offense, the wishbone, and if even the slightest thing breaks down, such as the pitch being a little bit behind, it leads to things such as a clip. Pursuit gets there faster. Blockers are throwing blocks behind people. It right, changes the angles that you would normally get. Trivet looking to throw. Screen to the left to Molman. He's got two blockers. Lewis goes through one blocker and Molman still on his feet carries it to the 41-yard line. A gain of 13 on the play. Well executed offensively, but great defensive reaction by the secondary coming up on this play. Just watch how quickly they close. Bowman just takes it up. He, he really did a nice job here. Made a fate right there. And now he does a real good job of breaking the first tackle and picking up a yard or two before he gets pulled down. Third and 15, even with the big pickup, still a long yardage situation for Dayton. Pitch back to Uber. He's looking to throw. The pressure is on. He airs it out, and that one's going to be intercepted by Terry Leggett. And Leggett's got a wall of blockers. Leggett cuts it back to the middle of the field. Madsen runs him down at the 30. There is a flag on the play. It is a post-possession flag. So even if the penalty is against the Comets, they will retain possession at their own, well, right now it's at the 31. A blocking below the waist penalty on the run back. Fourth turnover. I know Andrew's really upset about it right here because as he makes this play, the pressure comes on him as he tries to get set and he has to change his trajectory and hang it up in the air, giving the defense time to get back on, under control and step in front and make the tackle or make an interception. And then on the, on the attempted tackle, it was a low block. Corey Baskerville, right last, year's, last year's leading tackler, was the man who forced Huber to make the high pass. He was the one who applied the pressure. So Hillside takes over latter stages of the third quarter. 
And they will start from their own 13 because of the penalty. Stokes going nowhere as Lynch drops him down at the 10. Neil Lynch has had a big ball game for Dayton. Now defensively, he's done real well. They haven't been able to run to that uh, offensive uh, left, defensive right, with any any success at all. Pressured everything, forced it deep, let the pursuit catch up. Everything a good defensive end is supposed to do, he's done. The ball back to the 8, so a loss of 5 on the play. Second and 15. Parker in motion. Not much yardage for Ogle. Now that's the play that he opened the second half with. The difference this time was that Pat Conti really put a lick on the lead blocker, closed the hole down, and Ogle just could not get to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, if you missed the opening play of the second half, Kendall Ogle had a touchdown but just couldn't keep his balance on the near sidelines and stepped on the sideline. At the 34, he was clearly gone. Well, just by half the width of his foot, he hit the sideline. And again, Ogle having trouble with his chin strap. Tony DiPaolo gives it a quick snap to the side of the head. And it will be third and 15. Lewis rolling right with the option. He's got Ogle in front of him, but he is forced out of bounds. A gain of two. Trivet came up from his cornerback spot, and he combined with Kunzel to force Lewis out of bounds. Fourth and 13. Now, once Ogle gets ahead of him, as you said, there is no more option. He becomes a lead blocker, so the, the defense knows exactly where to go. There is nothing to deter them from going after the one ball carrier remaining, and that was, unfortunately, for Brian Lewis, it was he. Kunzel made a real good play to avoid the lead block. There is Devin Long. He generally would be in punting for the Comets. But he's got to watch Rick Henriquez. Henriquez felt the pressure. He tries to run with it, and he is going down. And the Bulldogs are hoping safety, but Dickett actually works to their advantage that they tackle them at the one. If, you, if you'll watch this, you'll see his short blocker, Everett Stokes here, backs up, back pedals right into his path, and he has no place to go, the punter. He had to run the football. His own man blocks it. Watch it here. You just see 27 backed up and forced him to run to the side. Fortunately for the, for the Bulldogs, it is not two points. And the defense was getting a little excited, thought they'd put points up on the board, but uh, as it will possibly turn out, they'll get an extra four or five. Let's see who gets the call. Huber's been in the end zone twice this season. Again, an official timeout, and again, they're working on the chin strap of Ogle. Now you've got your choice of several people to try and punch it into the end zone here. Well, the play that they run so well, it looks like a power eye from the wishbone where Huber does carry the ball off tackle. That could be a very nice short yardage play. I don't think they want to, to gamble and put the ball on a pitch at this field position. There is a hillside player down in the end zone, and I believe that it's is Ogle. Ogle. It is Ogle. At first I thought they were fixing his headgear, but it wasn't. They called the trainer on the field. So they are working on Kendall Ogle. 7 nothing. Dayton Lee. Dayton has first and goal from the one. When you, when you get to the goal line offense with the, with the wishbone, the defense becomes so compact that you can't really read at snap who is going to be covering what phase of the triple option. It could be anybody. Uh, and you like to use what they call oh-no coverage there, you know. <laughs> and the quarterback pulls the ball out, runs down the line of scrimmage, oh-no, who's going to hit me? <laughs> he doesn't know. Well, the way that Trivet runs as Ogle 
is walking off the field. The way the Trivet runs, I wouldn't be surprised to see him keep the ball. And again, the way they've distributed the carries, I wouldn't be surprised to see anybody run the ball. No, that's true. They, everybody's got their hands on. Mark Nadzen will bring the team up. He's the offensive center. Trivet behind him. It is Huber, and Huber dives into the end zone. It's a 13-0 Dayton lead. That's the play I was talking about. It's almost like a power eye play, but they do fake the fullback first. However, there was a soft spot in the goal line defense there of Hillside. There was nobody lined up in that position. Nads it on to attempt the point. The line shifts to the right to join the center. Nadzin's kick. And it is through. So it is a 14 to nothing Dayton lead. They take advantage of the punt, which never got off the ground. And here's the touchdown run by Huber. See the soft spot there over number 63. All, all the people run through there. There's nobody there to block, really. And the two lead blockers from the offensive backfield go through there unscathed. And they just followed John Cataldo into the end zone. Cataldo, the right side tackle, five foot ten senior. The John, the John fell lonely. There was nobody there to block. Well, he had two of his own teammates, including the ball carrier. That really made three running up behind him. And the Bulldogs punch it into the end zone for a 14-0 lead here in the late stage of the fourth, third quarter, excuse me. Now, Kucharski twice has hit line drive squib type kicks. Let's see if he'll try it again. They're probably afraid of the speed. He hits a line drive this time, and it hits Adams in the chest. Parker tries to field it, and Parker falls on it at the 16 yard line. Well, that one caught Lamond Adams right in the chest. That was a hard line drive that Kucharski hit. So well, 14 nothing lead for the Bulldogs. His extra point kick was a bullet, too. You know, it yeah. was really well. Well, that was Madsen with the extra point that oh, Kucharski oh, well, with the kickoff. Well, they kicked like twins. <laughs> <laughs> that one was a bullet. It says Rawlings right across yeah. Adams' uh, shoulder pads right now and here is Ogle fresh off the bench remember he was injured just prior to the touchdown but he is back on the offensive for Hillside and he will have 11 yards and a first down for the Comets if Peter Kunzel didn't try to rip the ball out on him then and, and, and break his stride he might have gone all the way because it was Kunzel and and uh, Trivet were the only two remaining tacklers Ogle with 79 rushing yards today. The rest of the team a minus 12. Ogle. And now you've got to assume that the Dayton defense is going to key on number 42. Still plenty of football time left. One full quarter and whatever is left of this third quarter. Well, there's plenty of time. They found the, the soft spot now in this uh, Bulldog defense because they're running the base play of the wing tee offense, which is the fullback trap, right up over the center's butt. Lewis, quick toss left to Leggett. Leggett might have brought it out to the 36. Terry might want to fake and roll to the outside because all the inside-out pursuit is what's catching him. If he'd roll outside, he'd be one-on-one -on -one with the defender and have a much better opportunity for a big play. That's what he's looking for. He's trying to bust one. Third and two. Tony Maglione 
signaling in the plays from the sideline. Lewis is four of eight today, third and two. Stokes will lose yardage. Ball pops free, but no, he was down. The knee was down already, so Stokes is dropped at the 34. Loss of two, it'll be fourth and four. Well, if you run the same play again, and Byron Lewis holds on to the football and runs the bootleg action from it, it's all over on this team, folks. It'll be a six-pointer because everybody was in a pinch technique moving to the inside on that play. There was nobody in containment. Timeout called by Hillside. John Kay with a big decision here on fourth and four. His team down 14-0. Boy, this is a biggie of a decision because he doesn't want to give the ball up uh, with an undetermined amount of time left. Two, two scores down and give it the ball in field position like this to the Springfield team. Or excuse me, I did it again, Paul. Doggone it, the Dayton Bulldogs. Just look at the shirts. That's right. That's right. Think of Dayton Bulldogs. Cheerleaders all say Dayton on it. Just think of the youngest signer of the U.S. Constitution. That's true. I will not think about my childhood when this was known as the Springfield Regional. <laughs> See, we give you a little bit of history here during our sports broadcast. The youngest signer of the U.S. Constitution at 26 years of age was Jonathan Dayton. All of the, uh, the uh, regional schools were named after Revolutionary War heroes, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. David Brearley. Former New Jersey Governor Livingston. Fourth down punting situation for the Comets. High snap. Simmons comes down with it. The lefty kicks it. It's a short kick. And it is fielded at the 50 and marked down at the Dayton 49-yard line. Arthur L. Johnson being the fourth regional school. From the 49, Dayton will take over. Late, late third quarter. Official clock operator Larry Barrett is out on the field. And he is counting down the seconds left in the quarter. And I'm sure Dayton is not in any rush to get off a play here in the third quarter unless they have to. And Trivet will get the play started, give it to Kunzel. He'll make it just about to the midfield stripe. And that will do it. Three quarters are complete here at Meisel Field. The Dayton Bulldogs have extended their lead. Dayton 14, Hillside nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. Digger Phelps, it's, it's really a disgrace in a sense if he was pushed or cajoled uh, to leaving after doing everything correctly, whether you like the way he ran his offense or defense, uh, he did everything within the rules and they all graduated. I mean, that's a heck of a platform. Welcome back to Springfield, everyone. Dayton enjoying a 14 to nothing lead and the Dayton ground machine has run well it through three quarters, 130 yards of rushing offense for the Bulldogs today. Each team has been hit with a, a decent number of penalties. Four for Hillside, three for Dayton. Four big turnovers for the Bulldogs. And I'm sure Tony Maglione will address that in the post-game locker room. But uh, his club does have a 14 to nothing lead. They've got the football second and nine at the 50-yard stripe. And they have broken out of the wishbone into a wing tee. Conti. 
with a six yard pickup. It'll be third and three. So the Bulldogs break out of the wishbone for the first time today. It looks like the kind of formation that one might be passing from in a long yardage situation. Seven in the first, seven in the third for Dayton. The first one after an extremely long drive, the second one after a one play drive. If you really can call it a, a drive. Took advantage of a, the punter having to run the football, tackled him at the one. 14 nothing Dayton. Huber, two yards, it'll set up a fourth and one. Fourth and one for the Bulldogs. And they have not made any motion to go to the punter. You might see ditto on this one, the same play. By shifting that tight end over to the split end side of the formation, they've created a soft spot and been able to attack it over and over again. Well, they're back in the wishbone. Let's see if they use the play that scored the second touchdown. And that's uh, essentially what they do. The play is everybody follow Cataldo and Nags, and we're going to get the first down, and that's what happened. Andrew Nags and the John Cataldo leading. This time they reverse it to run back to the weak side of the formation instead of the strong side. Good blocking on the part of the offensive line at that point. Remember, whoop, hold that ball in there, and... And I got to give the people here at Dayton credit. They can improvise on the fly. They're having a little trouble with the PA system. So they gave the winning 50 50 ticket to the student in the Bulldog mascot uniform. He took a megaphone and called out the winning number. Here comes Conti, and he's into the secondary, and Conti brings it inside the 20. Well, I'll tell you what, he's quick. He's quick feet, gets in the hole real quick. Watch this now. It's kind of a counter. It's a counter dive is what it is from the wishbone. Follows the fullback who had been the lead blocker. Tries to fight for balance and does. Finds up about six extra yards on the play. The ball at the 18-yard line. Conti today, seven carries, 39 yards. Here is Huber, trying to get to the outside on Leggett, and he's forced out at the 10. I think I'll give our statistician, Bill Bromberg, some work to do. If we could see a comparison, well, not really a comparison, but just a listing of the four backs, quarterback and the three backs, and how many times they've carried today. Because, again, Tony Maglione has split up the responsibilities. Well, there's Andrew Huber, 14 carries, 64 yards for Huber, and he has, of course, the two touchdowns. It will be second and four for the Bulldogs. Uber. He will probably have a first down at that point. The Bulldogs will look to extend their 14-0 lead. The ball marked at the five, and yes, it will be a first and goal for the Dayton Dogs. Well, it's just man-on-man -man blocking right there between Andrew Nags, John Dijon Cataldo, and Pat Conti is the lead blocker there because he is doing a heck of a job as the lead blocker. Look, you ask for it, you get it. Uber, 15 carries, Trivet with 9, Conti with 7, Kunzel with 5. Pretty well distributed among the four runners. Here's another carry for Conti, and Pat Conti will have a touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run for Pat Conti makes it 20 to nothing in favor of Dayton.
the reciprocal play to the left. Nadzin looking to add the 21st point, and he does. Out of the hold by Trivet, it is Dayton 21, Hillside nothing. Here's the touchdown run from the end zone. Man-on-man -man blocking, two lead blockers through, two halfback fullback. Conti just keeps following the orange shirts, and all there is is orange shirts in the way of them getting to the end zone. Twenty-one nothing, Dayton with the lead. Still early stages of the fourth quarter, and apparently Dayton will improve to one and one on the season. Hillside will drop to 0 and 2, barring a big fourth quarter comeback. Hillside will host Governor Livingston next week. Dayton, on the other hand, will be traveling to Newark to take on Central High School before they host a home game. Here on the 18th against Johnson Regional, they will bring in temporary lights for the game. They'll play it Friday evening, the 18th. It's a 7 o'clock start here at Meisel Field, so all you Bulldog supporters can watch the team under the lights. Friday evening, the 18th. A little ground ball. Takes a strange little hop, and it's finally fielded at the 27. That ball took a, little, a bad bounce, sort yes. of like... Sort of like a, uh, a check from the uh, Congressional Bank. <laughs> Boy, this is a current events course. <laughs> so Hillside will take over. You know I've been waiting all day for that one. From the 27, Hillside will start it. That kind of kickoff, you don't have to worry too much about a whole lot of return yardage. Unlike the return we saw last week. Yes. <laughs> Last weekend, I was at the Sea Caucus game, so a tuck kickoff return, and last week we covered the Chatham Glen Ridge game. Ogle, and Ogle carries three or four people with him to the 35 yard line. A gain of eight on the play for Kendall Ogle. Second down, the ball rests right at the 35-yard line of Hillside. And obviously the Comets are concerned. They have yet to put any points up on the board this season. They are into their eighth scoreless quarter. And it will be tough to score here in the fourth. Stokes has trouble. The ball is free. And they will sort this one out from underneath the pile. Neil, Neil Lynch thought he had one. Yeah, with the 21-0 lead, you're, you're thinking pick it up and run with the touchdown. Recovered by the Comets. That was Alex Brescia, the left tackle who came up with the football. But you, you see six points and you see defensive glory, which doesn't happen all that often. So the Comets will keep possession. Hillside today, their carries, not a surprise. Ogle with 15 carries. The next closest is Stokes with five. And then the rest of the pack. Loss of three on the play, third and five. Lewis looking to throw to the right. And he has Leggett for a first down at the 44. Leggett trying to stretch the ball forward for an extra yard. He has brought down a first down for the Comets. Like Trevor was in great position in coverage that time, but the ball was just drilled perfectly right into the chest of Terry Leggett, and, and Trevor just had no opportunity to defend the ball. Leggett, baseball player in the spring, center fielder for the Comets. First year out for the football team, first and 10 at the 44. This is Stokes. Stokes is across the 45 to the 46-yard line, a two-yard gain for Everett Stokes. Everett didn't get to play much last year. He broke his ankle in the scrimmage with Brearley and missed most of 1990. 
His brother Cedric was on this team last year. He's now over at Kane College. Parker in motion. Lewis running the option. Takes it outside. Eludes two tacklers. And he crosses the 50 into Dayton territory. And the mark will put him back at the hillside 48. Apparently his knee was grounded on the play. Their timing has not been good on that option play today, Paul. They, they haven't had the good pitch relationship all day long. Part of that comes from the pressure, that the relentless pressure that the, that the Bulldogs' front seven has been putting on the quarterback as he comes down the line. Even that case right there, the ball ended up on the outside hash mark, and there were 10 jerseys, orange jerseys, in that zone playing defense. Third and five. Here comes Stokes in motion. Fake to Parker. Lewis, his pass just broken up by Molman. It was intended for Scott. A little bit behind the intended receiver, and Molman also helped to break it up. Fourth and five. Well, as we said before, Jason Molman owns the right-hand side of the defense. He's played very well there today. Molman and Lynch, in particular, have played very well defensively. But the Dayton defense looking to record the shutout today. Defense creeping forward. Lewis, quick toss, slapped away by Kucharski, and on downs, the Bulldogs will take over. Peter Kucharski, the sophomore, got in the passing lane and slapped that one away. Timeout Dayton. We'd like to tell you about an upcoming soccer broadcast coming your way on TV3 as the Pony Pirates of Seton Hall Prep will take on the Columbia Cougars. You'll be able to see this matchup Friday evening, the 11th of October at 9 p.m., and then again Sunday afternoon, the 13th at 3 p.m. Iron Hills Conference soccer action coming your way on TV3. You saw Columbia earlier this week receive a bit of a scare from East Orange. A very much improved East Orange soccer program. Took a 2-0 lead on the Cougars, but Columbia came back for a 4-2 victory. The ball rests at the hillside 48. That's where Dayton will start from. And Clayton Trivet will take a breather on the sideline. The Bulldogs have built up a 10, a uh, 21 to nothing lead. And number 10, Dave Natolo, will be in to call signals. Tolo on the quarterback sneak and a nine yard pickup. Well, he had to run the ball because he was the only back who hadn't touched it. So now it just keeps everything nicely balanced. Next play has to be right halfback Robert Johnson, who's new in there right now. Tony Maglione obviously getting some time in the ball game for everyone. The Tolo is a junior. Johnson a senior second and a little over a yard this is Kucharski 
And Kucharski has a first down. Pete Kucharski, the man who just made a big defensive play, knocking down the pass, now gets a chance to carry the football, and he brings it to the 31-yard line of Hillside. That's a nice way to, to break in as a ball carrier. The point of attack was smeared. There was nothing there. He just broke it to the outside. He kept right on running, picked up a first down. Great effort. That's the official time being kept on the field. <laughs> Four, 440 left in the game. You thought some guy was doing his math homework. <laughs> little mix up in the backfield Johnson has trouble holding on to the football it's down on the turf and the Comets have recovered Hillside will take over at their own 34 we had both halfbacks on the quarterback meet at the same point pop so on the turnover the fifth of the day for Dayton but uh, when you're up 21, you're not all that concerned with anything beyond number four. You know you're getting some experience for some other players in the ball game. Well, so much for the Bill Parcells philosophy. If you turn the ball over five times, you can't win. <laughs> now, when you play the kind of defense that Dayton has done today, you're in good position. And also, when you run down the clock as Dayton did especially in the first half of play they just owned the clock first and ten from the 34 Scott dives out to the 40 a gain of five on the play Comet offensive line dominated on that play. They just moved everything orange back five yards. They give to Parker. And Parker drags the ball across the 45 to the 46. A first down for the Comets. Tony Maglione would like to erase the first eight minutes of the season. Yeah, he's, he's had a good ball club since that point. Said they played very well through the last three quarters of the Immaculata game. They certainly have played four good quarters today. New quarterback, by the way, in the ball game. That's Lamond Adams for Hillside. And Adams still on his feet. And he will be pushed out at the 43-yard line and probably will have a first down. There was that play we were talking about before. Have you, if, if the defensive end can get hooked. The guard's out here, hooks, and the quarterback keeps the ball on the bootleg, but it was a design play as he takes off toward the split inside of the formation, and they force him to the sideline in pursuit. Change brought across the field. Two minutes and 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter and by more than the length of the football Hillside has a first down First down the ball at the 44. Adams again calling signals for the Comets. Into the secondary, Maltese Scott. Scott will have a big run to the 27. And another hillside first down. That back to that base play of the wing tee, the, the fullback trap up the middle. And they found the soft spot when Dayton overshifts and have attacked it. Adams rolling right. He'll stop and throw. 
completion, but a flag. Ineligibles downfield, about three of them. Todd Harris caught the ball for the Comets. He was eligible. He was wearing an 88. And that is the call. The way Lamont put the brakes on, though, it looked like it was going to be a run. With the exception of the turnovers, and again, remember, one happened when the game was somewhat decided. The first turnover was on the punt, so you could obviously you don't attribute that to the offense. Dayton avoided the thing that does in most high school teams. They had long drives and did not commit the turnover or the penalty to kill most of those drives. And that is the thing that will generally do in most high school teams. You're asking 15, and 16, and 17-year-old young men, 11 of them, to not make a mistake for 10 or 11 consecutive plays, a hard thing to do, and Dayton did just that, especially on that first drive. I'll tell you how hard it is to do. You can't even get that done in practice, Paul. <laughs> Kevin Richardson on the carry, Morrison with the tackle. Because there's not a football coach in the world that hasn't said, let's do it once again. One more. One more play. One more play until you do it right. And first thing you know, you're practicing an extra half hour. But that Dayton first drive of the day, that right now stands up as the winning points, just kept pounding and pounding away. Because they got the mistake over with early. Remember a penalty on the very first play of the game? Yes. Even before the first play. It was a dead ball foul. Adams looking to throw. Forced from the pocket. And he guns it towards Mel T. Scott. It is incomplete. Third and 11 coming up. Remember next week on TV3, Bergen Catholic Montclair. That Bergen Catholic club is being touted as one of the best in New Jersey. And then Orange and Caldwell. Which should be a real good matchup from the Northern Hills Conference. And we will get a chance to see the outstanding runner from Orange High, Terrell Willis. Injured Dayton player on the far sideline, Tony Maglione takes the long jog across the field. As, as I think now about the three games that we've done this year so far, I've seen more ineligibles downfield called than I ever had before, and I think the difference is the fifth official on the field. Kevin Shola is the player who was injured but makes his way across the field. Real quick uh, program note for TV3. You want to know a lot about the world of high school sports? Join Rob Matola for the Suburban High School Sports Report Thursday evenings at 7.30 and Friday nights at 7.30, only on TV3. We'll be talking football, soccer, girls, tennis, field hockey. Whatever happens in the fall, you'll see it on the Suburban High School Sports Report. Third and 11 for the Comets. Adams keeps it rolling right, force from the pocket. And Adams will carry it to the 16-yard line. He'll broken be play. Close to a first down, I think he'll have it. Yeah, bro a broken play on that one. And uh, Adams, he, uh, he made something out of nothing. Time running out in the game. 21-0, Dayton leads. Touchdown for Hillside. That was Sean Ellison, number 22. Sean Ellison with the 16-yard touchdown run. And that is the first points that Hillside has put up on the board this season. Well, they found a soft spot there against this reserve defense of, of the, the uh, dogs. When they overshift, they leave that middle of the formation open for that trap play. And that's what they've been able to execute so far. Comets for two. Very good avoidance of saying Springfield again by just going with the Did team Did you notice nickname. that, right? Going for the two-point conversion. Adams pitches it back to Ellison, and Ellison has the two-point conversion in addition to the touchdown. Sean Ellison puts eight points up on the boards, and the Hillside Comets 
are in the scoring column. But Dayton is still with a comfortable 21 to 8 lead. Now here's the trap play we talked about. Halfback through, makes a nice cut back to his left. Second cut, fights off three tacklers, takes the ball into the end zone. Real good effort. Then on the extra point, Lamont did a real fine job of executing the option on the play because he made a real quick read and got a nice pitch off to his halfback. Here, watch this on the option here. Down the line, there's his quick read. Sees it right there and just flips it right back. Blind pitch, by the way, to his halfback. I would guess we can expect to see the option, the um, onside kick here for Hillside. Alex Guzman will tee it up. He's going to need a few more folks out there with him to, uh, before they'll let him kick. They're only one short now. Yeah, they're one short. There we go. And Dayton has 10 men within 20 yards. So they are ready. Lots of backs and receivers there. Guzman Good bounces job. it. It's free momentarily. And then James Basil covers up on it. And that will preserve the Dayton victory, 21-8. to eight. If you kick the top stripe of the football when you stand it up on the tee like that, the ball will always take the high bounce on the second bounce, and that's what they're looking for. And Basil able to cover up on it. And Dayton needs only run out the clock right now to preserve their first victory of the season. Again, they'll be on the road next week when they take on Nork Central. First and 10 from the 42. And Trivet back in at quarterback. He runs it forward for four yards. And there is Dave Natolo. Took a hit to the back of the head. That is why Trivet is back in the ball game. And that will do it for today's broadcast. As the Dayton Bulldogs win their first of the season, they knock off the Hillside Comets. And uh, Tony Maglione apparently will get his initiation. Oh. Oh. For his initial victory for the Dayton Bulldogs, he takes the Gatorade bath. Two former starters did that. <laughs> I was about to say, there'll be laps uh, as penalty for that one. Again, the final score today, Dayton 21, Hillside 8. We'll be back with the post-game show right after this. At Suburban Cablevision's TV3, we're channeling our energy to bring you the best in local programming. You can view educational shows, community events, local entertainment, Sports. All courtesy of TV3. We're the channel you've been flipping for. It's even the record at 1-1 one and one with today's 21-8 victory over the Hillside Comets. And uh, even though 21 points put up on the board, defense certainly played a big part in the game today for the Dayton Dogs. Neil Lynch uh, is with us uh, to represent the defense. And Neil, as everyone who plays Hillside is going to do this year, they've got to think of a way to control Kendall Ogle. What did the Bulldogs have as their plans today? Oh uh, Well, we knew that they were that he was their best runner, so we, were, we didn't key on him, but we knew they ran belly a lot, and that, that was their favorite play, and that would give him the ball. So uh, we, we practiced on stopping belly most of the time during practice this week. Did they pass maybe a little bit more than you had anticipated? Uh, no. I, 
they passed. I, don't, I had no idea how much time, how many times they were going to pass. But you, you were kind of expecting them to come out to pass. And when they did, it, and you in particular really controlled that outside area, it looked like uh, not too much was going to get around you today. Yeah, um, I've been practicing and taking on pulling guards and everything, and uh, the coaches helped me a lot, and I was just prepared for today. Very good defensive effort for the entire team today. Uh, again, obviously things were well prepared for this club uh, for Hillside. Yeah, we were uh, psyched for this game, and uh, it was a real team effort. Everybody played well on the defense and offense. All right, Neil, thanks very much. Come by. Congratulations. Very good defensive effort. Andy, you were step on in here. Andy, the offense today did a great job. Let's start with the fact that you've got four guys in the backfield, yourself included, of course, who can carry the football. Teams cannot key on just one player on this Dayton offense. No, they can't, especially with the wishbone. Uh... I think Hillside thought we were going to go outside a lot more, and uh, we just ran it down their throat, and the uh, belly was there all day. I mean, our right side of the line just fired out and just blew them back. Yeah, it's a somewhat unusual <laughs> formation. We'll talk to the coach a little bit more about that, in that you follow not only the line but the fullback, and it's almost as if you have a, a two-fullback offense. Sure, that's how we got a lot of the yardage. I mean, uh, Kunzel, I just followed Kunzel right through the holes, and he just was putting people on the back, and it was there. It really was. Dijon was our uh, tackle, and... Uh, Nags, our guard, just laid the guys out beautifully. Let me ask you, as, as a representative of the team, you, you switched over to the wishbone this year. <laughs> how difficult was it for the players on the offense to adjust to the wishbone? Today it looked like everything went perfectly, but how difficult was it to learn the system? Well, last week against Immaculata, the first quarter was real tough. We had trouble getting used to the, the uh, pitches, and uh, everyone was real nervous. But we came out today, we knew the cameras were going to be here, we just wanted to have a good time and show everyone that the dogs are alive this year. All right, Andy, thanks very much. Come back. Congratulations. Tony Meglione, step on in here. Uh, the guy who obviously runs the show, the quarterback, Clayton Trivett, made some outstanding decisions today, whether to keep or to pitch. You count a lot, of course, on the quarterback, and he did a great job. Well, without a doubt, he's the coach on the field. Uh, he has a tremendous amount of responsibility. Uh, we run the triple option where he has to make a read on a tackle and on the end. Uh, it takes a special type of person to run it, and uh, so far he's doing a really nice job. Again, 21 points, uh, a nice showing by the offense, but the defense really looked strong today. Well, the defense, I think, uh, was strong last week as well. Uh, we just uh, offensively, we broke down a few times, a bad snap over the punter's head, so but that's behind us. Our offensive line did a great job today coming off the ball, and that's very important in a wishbone and I thought they took control of the uh, line of scrimmage. It would be nice, of course, all coaches would like to do something like this, but it would be nice to erase those first eight minutes of the season. Oh, yes, but at the same time, I think it teaches you a lesson uh, that you got to be ready for uh, four quarters. You can't play three or three and a half, and uh, hopefully that's going to help us the rest of the way. We uh, showed a graphic late in the ball game that almost every one of the four primary runners had at least five or seven carries today. You split up the responsibilities well and certainly obviously you're not allowing the defense to key anywhere. Well that's the beauty of the offense. I think every uh, athlete in the backfield knows he's going to get the ball and depends on the other person to block and he's got to do the same. So there's a lot of team effort there where they got to block for each other. All right, Tony, thanks very much for coming by. Congratulations. First victory at Dayton High. Yes. Hopefully many more to come. <laughs> All right. 21-8 to eight again, our final score. Dick Zimmer uh, again offensively. We talked about the fact that usually something breaks down Today, on many of their long drives, particularly the first of the game, everything went well for the Bulldogs, and they just took that 7 nothing lead and put it in the bank. Well, the mechanics of the wishbone of handling the ball were well executed today. It was like, it was like they have been working against the bags, really, because they didn't have that pressure on. The offensive line took off and was able to, to control the line of scrimmage and give the quarterback the daylight necessary to make the reads he had to do. With five turnovers, though, you got to hand it to their defense because they gave the ball up five times and the defense was able to shut down the hillside offense when they, when they really needed to. Well, that'll wrap it up for us today from our Mountain Valley Conference coverage of Dayton and Hillside. Remember, next week, it's Bergen Catholic Montclair and Orange and Caldwell. And again, our final score here, Dayton 21, Hillside 8. Good night, everyone.
Suburban Cablevision TV3 now concludes its broadcast day.